Hey there, math students. I want to talk about complex numbers today, and what I want to do is I want to review complex numbers. So if you don't know anything about complex numbers, this is probably not a good video for you. This is a good video for people who have seen complex numbers before, and they just need a little bit of a refresher. So first off, when would I see a complex number? When would they appear? Well, if, you, uh, if you're finding the roots of a quadratic equation like this, it might very well appear. Uh, let's say that we wanted to find the roots, the zeros, of this quadratic equation. Uh, there it is, equals zero, so we're, we obviously have that equation. And uh, I'm going to do this by completing the square, because to me that's the easiest way to do a problem like this. Uh, I'm going to have x squared minus 8x equals negative 25. And then I look, at, uh, I look at this and I say half of 8 is 4, 4 squared is 16. So I'm, I'm going to add a 16 here and add a 16 there. And what I end up with is x minus 4 squared equals negative 9. Now at this point, I'm very likely to say, ah, no solution, okay? There's no way that you can square something and get a negative number. Well, someone a few hundred years ago, I'm not sure who, said, yeah, but what if there were? What if there were such a number? What would it be like? Okay, well, let's see. Um, that means x minus 4 would be plus or minus the square root of negative 9. And, uh, well, I would want to get that perfect square out of there, so I'd say this is plus or minus the square root of 9 times the square root of negative 1, which would equal plus or minus 3 times. And this is where uh, the, they, they decided, okay, the square root of negative 1, we're going to call that i. So you end up with x minus 4 equals plus or minus 3i. So x equals 4 plus 3i, or 4 minus 3i, okay? Every complex number has a real part and an imaginary part, okay? The part that doesn't have an i associated with it, that's real. We're, we're used to real numbers. And then the imaginary part that is a real number times i, the imaginary unit. And before you say, what are you talking about? There's no such thing as imaginary numbers. I only want to deal with real things. Yeah, well, at about the same time that a lot of mathematicians were having trouble accepting imaginary numbers, a lot of mathematicians were also having trouble accepting negative numbers. Because negative numbers are also very abstract. What do you mean negative three? There's no such thing as having negative three trees in my yard. There's no such thing as a string being negative three inches long. Ah, this is preposterous. Yeah, well, it's very, very handy to have negative numbers now. We use them all the time. And you might find out that you use uh, complex numbers all the time as well, depending on what you're going to do in the future. So uh, let's see what to do with these complex numbers. Well, uh, what do we do with numbers? Well, we do arithmetic. That's one thing we do. So let's say we had uh, 4 minus 2i and I wanted to add 5 plus 7i. What would I do? Well, if you've ever added binomials, you know exactly what to do. You just combine your like terms. So 4 and 5, oh, sorry, I was going to add those. 4 and 5, that's our, that's our real part, so that's going to be 9. Negative 2, 7, that's going to be 5i. Voila, done. It's that easy. Subtraction, same thing. Just remember to, to distribute your minus. And it's the exact same thing. Multiplication, well, multiplication is also no big deal uh, as long as you uh, remember how to multiply binomials, okay? So let's say we have, oh, let, let's take those same two binomials, uh, 4 minus 2i, and I'm going to multiply it times 5 plus 7i, okay? And uh, people set up multiplication in a variety of ways. Some people make a little box some people do it vertically. Some people use the FOIL acronym, first, outside, inside, last. Some people distribute twice. It doesn't matter what you do. You end up doing the same arithmetic either way. So I'm going to do this, uh, I'm gonna do this vertically because that's my preferred method. So 7i times negative 2i is negative 14i squared. And 7i times 4 is 28i. And 5 times negative 2i is negative 10i. And 5 times 4 is 20. And then I add them all up and I get 20 plus 18i minus 14i squared. But, remember what i squared is? If i is the square root of negative 1, that means i squared must be negative 1. 
Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, so that means this is 14 times negative 1, which is just negative 14, and minus negative 14 is the same thing as plus 14. So we end up with 20 plus 14, which is 34 plus 18i. And that's our answer. Okay, again, real part plus imaginary part. Every complex number can be written as real part plus imaginary part. And you may be thinking, why is he making such a big deal about this? Well, it's kind of a big deal because uh, it, it's, it's the convention that we use. And if you don't have one sort of decided convention, one, one convention that everybody agrees with, then one person's writing it this way and one person's writing it another way. And you can't tell if two numbers are equal or not. So mathematicians around the world have sort of decided this is really the best way to write it so that we all are on kind of the same, uh, uh, we're on the same page here. Uh, let's do another one. Let's multiply a couple more binomials. Uh, let's do, uh, this time let's do 2 plus the square root of 3 times i times uh, 1 minus 1 half i. Okay, so this time I'll do the, the FOIL thing. Okay, so first is going to be 2 times 2 is 2. Outside is 2 times negative 1 half. 2 times negative 1 half is just negative 1. So this is going to be minus i uh, plus square root of 3 times i. And then the last ones are minus root 3 over 2 times i squared. And remember, i squared is negative 1. So this is just going to be plus root 3 over 2. So what's my real part? 2 plus square root of 3 over 2. What's my imaginary part? Uh, I'm going to write it as plus the square root of 3 minus 1 times i. Okay? That's how I want to write it. Real part and imaginary part. Let's do one more. So this time I'm going to do uh, 5 plus 1 half i times 5 minus 1 half i. Oh, okay, they look kind of the same. And uh, 5 squared, 25, minus 5 over 2 times i, plus 5 over 2 times i, minus 1 half i squared. Sorry, 1 fourth, sorry. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. Now, I should have known that the middle two terms are going to cancel out because this is a plus b times a minus b, which is just going to be a squared minus b squared, right? Difference of squares, except there's a little twist this time because this time we get 25 minus 1 fourth times i squared, and that's negative 1, so this turns into plus 1 fourth, so it's 25.25. Interesting. You multiply two complex numbers together and you get a real number with no imaginary part. Aha! Uh -huh. This always happens when you multiply these types of numbers. These are called complex, complex conjugates. Okay? Conjugate, just like when, if you're learning a foreign language and you conjugate a verb, same word, okay? Or at least same spelling. Uh, so uh, whenever you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, then you get a real number. And what is the conjugate? Well, the conjugate is the, the complex number that has the same real part, and then the imaginary part is just the additive inverse. It's just the negative of the, of the original one. Okay? So we've done addition, we've done subtraction, or at least we talked about it. We did multiplication. I guess we've got to do division now. All right? So... Let's do division. Uh, we've got 15 plus 16i divided by 2 plus 3i. Okay, well, how are we going to do this? There's a really, really simple trick that makes this very, very easy. And that is, remember how we were just talking about complex conjugates? Well, they come in handy here. I'm going to multiply this fraction times 2 minus 3i over 2 minus 3i. Now, why am I doing that? I'll tell you why. Because look, I'm going to have 2 plus 3i times 2 minus 3i in the denominator. That's going to give me a real number. And so that way it's going to be easier to split apart my real and imaginary part because I can just divide 
uh, whatever this product here. I'll show you what happens. I'll show you. Okay, so 15 times 2 is 30. 15 minus 3i is minus 45i uh, plus 32i minus 48i squared. Everything over. Uh, and this is going to be 2 squared plus 3 squared, which is 4 plus 9, which is 13. Okay, now what is my real part? My real part is going to be 30 plus 48, so 78, minus 45i plus 32i is minus uh, 13i, and that's over 13. And so now, what's 78 over 13? Actually, this, this turned out really, really... Uh, 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 evenly. 78 divided by 13 is 6, and 13 over 13 is 1, so that's just 6 minus i. They don't always turn out that cleanly, but this time it did. Uh, one more. Okay, so this time we have negative 4 minus 7i over 1 minus 8i. We're going to do the exact same thing. That is, we're going to multiply times the complex, complex conjugate of this thing. So times 1 plus 8i over 1 plus 8i. And that's going to get us negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times 8i is negative 32i. Negative 7i times 1 is negative 7i. Negative 7i times 8i is minus 56i squared. And again, so and this is going to be 1 squared minus 64i squared, also known as 1 plus 64, which is 65, the sum of squares when you multiply a, a complex number times its conjugate. And so let's see, what does this get us? Again, we have minus something i squared, so that becomes plus. So negative 4 plus 56 is uh, 52, and that's going to be minus 39i over 65. And you can't leave it like that. You have to separate out your real and imaginary parts. So 52 over 65 will shoot. That's just 4 fifths. And 39 over 65, that's just 3 fifths. So we get 4 fifths minus 3 fifths i. And that's our answer. Okay. So one last thing about the complex conjugates, and that is this. Remember that problem we looked at at the very, very beginning uh, where we ended up with, uh, we were solving for the roots of a quadratic equation, and we ended up with, uh, was it um, x minus 4 squared equals negative 9? And so that meant that x minus 4 was plus or minus 3i, so that means that x equals 4 plus 3i, or 4 minus 3i. Look, complex conjugates, okay? Whenever you're solving for uh, whenever you're, where you're finding the roots of a quadratic equation and you get one complex root, well, and it's a, comp it's a quadratic equation that has real coefficients, okay? So whenever you have a quadratic equation with real coefficients, which is the, it's the kind we're used to seeing, and you want to find the roots, and one of the roots is complex, you know the other root as well because it's going to be the complex conjugate of that. They always come in pairs like that, okay? All right. I think there's enough uh, enough of a review about complex numbers. You probably uh, you probably feel like you you uh, you kind of know what's going on now. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.